All right, guys. First, I think I want to congratulate you guys are in a very practical class. You're going to learn a lot of uh, marketable skills can be directly used in the job. Okay, it's not like other courses like circuit one and mostly analog or math, physics. These are some of the background knowledge you have to have and to help with other uh, jobs or practice. This is different. What are coding up right now here in the class? It's gonna be directly used in the job. If you've got a job in Qualcomm, Intel, in the same programming language, sometimes can be the same IPGA platform. Okay, so this is the one of the, how many? I mean, I'm not talking about software. I think this is the only second tool. Uh, data structure algorithms, you are, if you are trying to find a uh, software career, but uh, hardware wise, I think this is one of the three most practical classes in the curriculum, in the C curriculum. So what are the other two, you think? Engineering 330A, you're learning triple AL, and CE 351 microcontrollers. Okay. Still, you know, when my website has the two the links for the class and the labs. The lectures on Tuesday and the labs on Thursday. It's a little bit odd because uh, one of the labs on Thursday is earlier than the lecture. So I'm going to cover the lecture material one week ahead, or on Tuesday at least, uh, before I go to the lab on Thursday. Um, the tutorials themselves are pretty much labs. No significant differences. So the only difference I can tell is probably these ones are more basic and I'm gonna extend the topic a little bit in the lab, but they are very similar. And you are doing simulation and as well as emulation, you know, emulation on IPGAs, both in the lectures and also in the labs. We have how many tutorials? I think somewhere around 10 or 11, and we're gonna have a course project. Um, who knows, I mean, because this is the uh, first semester I'm teaching this class, and I don't know how fast you can follow these tutorials. If I see like 99% of the students are not able to make the deadline, I probably will extend the deadline a little bit. Uh, if that happens, then it's gonna squeeze the time over here. So probably won't, won't be able to have a time for a course project. It depends on your performance, right? And you can see these are the uh, Verilog, which is the VHDL, is the language you are going to program your RPGA, and also the language you are going to use to describe the hardware. Um, 50 years ago, when we didn't have this technology, people built digital circuits on the breadboard or on PCBs. So they have individual logic gates on IC chips, like a one inverter is the same size as the Arduino chip. <laughs> and they just put all the logic gates together and you can still form a very simple A-bit computer. Is that amazing? On the breadboard. And it worked. Uh, but can you imagine you have everything on that, it's just a CPU but nothing else to design a, a computer or laptop or a smartphone from that kind of design. So the size of the phone probably is gonna be the same size of the room that you cannot put in the pocket. So that's why uh, people have been, you know, spend a lot of time and invest a lot of money on how to uh, reduce the size of the silicon die. Uh, so that's why right now the most popular technology being used for the iPhone, tw iPhone, tw iPhone 12 or uh, I don't know which version of the Snapdragon CPU being used for Samsung. These are five nanometer chips instead of using individual gates to build a CPU, but they use integrated circuits. Okay. But in order to verify the logic before they send it out to TSMC for fabrication, which usually costs a few million dollars for one run, for one design, they want to 
emulate everything on what? RPGAs. So these boards have uh, individual, you know, you can imagine they are lookup tables, but before we get into the details about lookup tables, these are actually just the individual gates inside the chip. And when you program it, it is able to make all the connections and give you that logic circuits instead of plugging every individual uh, IC gates onto the breadboard to make the circuits. It's already happening inside the chip, a little single chip. And it can synthesize, so that's the process of converting your Verilog code, which is the hardware description language, into the logic gates. So that process is called synthesis. So when you synthesize your Verilog code, or sometimes called RTL, register level, uh, register transistor level language, okay, to the um, IPG board, you need a, a EDA tool like Vivado or Cadence. You know, Cadence is not just for laying out. You can also write a Verilog code in there and synthesize it, and then convert it into um, digital circuits. So that's a design flow in the industry. You're not going to plug in the individual gates onto the breadboard. You're going to just uh, coding up your uh, RTL. Uh, if you need a, a CPU, definitely not everyone is starting out with from scratch with a CPU core, which is the RTL core. They're all described in, in Verilog. Uh, usually people in Samsung, in other digital design companies, they purchase these IP cores which are just uh, RTL codes, code. Uh, there, you cannot see any symbols or uh, logic gates or circuits. They are all Verilog or RTL code. Okay. Um, for example, ARM, which is the most popular, one of the most popular CPU core being used for the Samsung phones. Okay. They're all ARM cores. If the company have to purchase a core and plug into their design, and then connect with all the other peripherals and make a CPU out of it, right? So, you know, before we are able to design a little SOC, which is over here, and we're going to learn the basics first. So these are the lectures and these are the labs. Uh, if you don't know how to, if it's the first thing in the class, you want to learn how to edit web, your web, web page first. So you can upload your lab reports to the uh, website, which is, you know, I already have all your names on, for, the, for the links to our web page over here. And for most of you guys have been in uh, several of my classes in the past, so you can directly you know, still keep using the old account number and password to log into my website. But what you need to do is just to create a new link. For example, I click into this website. Uh, it has all the other courses. So what you want to do is just reorganize everything over here. Right? Just, you have a link for this one, and then you click that link, you get into that class uh, reports. And you just want to put them all inside here, not being listed directly on the website, because you are going to have multiple other links over here as well. So for example, below this, you want to have a CE433 link. So I can click it and get into there and see all the lab reports over there. So you are going to have a, just imagine you're having a, a homepage, right? And you want to create multiple links on the homepage. So um, I don't have to create a new account for you guys. You just keep using that same account password. Make sense? Okay. And see any other things I want to talk about. All right, let's get into the tutorial, the first tutorial first. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys quizzes at the very beginning or at the end of the lab. I will let you know ahead. So sometimes you have to physically show up in the lab. So for example, next week on Thursday, I'm going to test you on how to use Vim, all these Vim commands. Uh, Vim is not optional in this class, it's required. Um, you must want to say like, there are so many editors, why do I have to use Vim? Because in Linux, you have to use Vim. And in the future, if you 
work for a company who use Cadence, they are all hosting Cadence, and they have Vim over there as an editor. That's the only one available in there. And if you are a computer engineer or computer scientist, you don't know how to use Vim, it sounds like odd. Uh, it's even different from latex. You know, you don't have to know latex, but you have to know Vim. All right. Um, <clears throat> and so Vim will be opened. You can open up Vim everywhere. Uh, but here in this class, I'm going to show you really quick the workflow, just show you a very simple simulation workflow. So you get some idea about the whole workflow because you have never worked in that way in the past, probably. Um, there might be multiple other ways to reach the same goal, but let me just show you really quick before we get into the tutorials, the detailed tutorials. For example, I'm going to run the simulation of an AND gate. Okay, I'm going to start doing that now. You don't have to follow because I'm going to do it really fast. You probably haven't set up Vim yet, right? Or Vivado. So in the future, what you're going to do is do this window, command line. And you can have your own folder somewhere else to host all your uh, Verilog files. But I would just put on the desktop and you do CD. And you don't even have to type type all the, the full name of the desktop. Just D, you see it's not, there are multiple names of, you know, starting with D, so you press tab, it's going to show the other one, but you just press again, it's going to show the desk, since there are only two names, two folders or two files uh, over there, start with D, all right? And get into desktop, and then GVIM, too small, I mean, I don't know how to make it larger, but, you know, it's re recorded. And uh, GVM, I would just do, you know, and gate.v is a Verilog file. There are two uh, very popular, there's no difference at all, two very popular hardware description languages. One is called Verilog, another one is called VHDL. So Verilog is the most popular one in the US, in China, in, in a, uh, a few other places, I don't know, but if you're trying to find a job, digital design job in the US or in China, which is impossible, but <laughs> in the US, for example, so it's better to learn Verilog. But there's, it's, it's okay if you only know VHDL when you are doing an the interview, they don't care. They're very similar, just different structure, and do the exact the same job. No difference at all in terms of functionality, okay? Um, and in Europe, in India, people use VHDL more often, but in the US, people use Verilog more often. Okay. Uh, so .v will be a Verilog file, .vhd will be the VHDL file. So I'm creating a Verilog file right now. Okay, so the window is too small. Uh, before doing that, I'm going to set a number. And <clears throat> I'm going to do a because I think it's too small for you guys. So I'm going to change the font size a little bit. What about that? All right. And then I'm going to start typing that arrow, the little ungate over here. So I'm not building an ungate on the breadboard, but I'm holding it up over here. So press I, and I'm going to insert the code uh, on the very top. And it's going to be a module. It's going to be ungate. It's going to have A, B, and Y. So three ports, A, B are import, inputs, Y is output. Okay. So it's very simple. I will just assign Y, assign A and a B to Y. All right. I Press shift colon so you can add, see at the bottom is blinking over there the cursor. I'll type W, which means it's, it's going to write this code into the file. And after I write it, you can see it's already saved on the desktop. Before you write it, you cannot have this on the desktop, even though you open it up on the desktop. But however, before save it, it's not showing up over here. I have to save it first. So colon W means 
write. So our writing for the file. And you're missing something, okay? You have the ports, but you're you not telling Varlog what are inputs, what are outputs. So uh, put a cursor here at the second line, then I'm gonna press Shift O. It's gonna open a new line. And if I put a cursor on the top, I just, I don't need to press shift at the same time, just press O, it's gonna create a new line uh, below it. So shift O, capital O is creating a new line above it. And lowercase O is creating a new line below it. So input A, B, output Y, uh, and column W is gonna write into it. So that's the on gate. And that's it. You're, you're just thinking about this is a chip. This is the chip. Even though it's just a one single gate chip, it's still a chip. It has two inputs, one output. Okay. You can see so something like you can grab from directly from the drawer in the lab. It's a chip. And now we need to test it. We need to inject the signals into the chip and test it. So you don't have to create the same the, the test bench. It's called the test bench, the testing file in the same file, or you can create a, in, create the test bench file in the in a different file. But now I'm gonna directly write it down in the same file, just make it simple. Okay, so but before we do that, this is a simulation file, you wanna define the time scale, be one nanosecond for each time unit, and one picosecond is the resolution of the time scale for the simulation. And then the test bench is also the also a module. And I will name it as NGATE TB test bench. Okay. Okay. It's like you are wrapping up, you just wrap up that little one gate into this higher level and injecting signals into it. So there are some definitions about the register level variable and where type variable, but I'm gonna introduce that later. Uh, before assigning values, I have to use a rack data type, okay? And um, it's gonna be in one, in two, and output is called out. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna probe out for the signal. And then I'm gonna initiate that instance, which is ungate. I'll just call the name of ungate. It has to be the same name as here. Keep in mind. I want to call the name of it. So I'm instanti instantiating that little ungate into this wrapper. And I can name it whatever you want. Okay. Little dog, little cat, whatever you want to name it. Doesn't matter. I just want to let you know. Doesn't matter. I would just, but usually you will see that people are naming it as. It's a unit under test, UUT, okay? So you'll know what is that. It's UUT, unit under test. And you wanna make the connections. So UUT in UUT, you wanna put a dot, and the signal here, also just right behind the dot, is a signal from the UUT. So what is the UUT right here? What's the UUT right here right now? It's being instantiating. What is the UUT? The AND gate, so that's why A is the port of the AND gate. I want to connect that port to IN1, which is my probe, uh, my signal in the test bench. That's another signal in the UT unit under test. That's signal B, it's an another input of the, of the AND gate. And I connect that one to IN2, which is my signal. I'm gonna, it's like, you're imagining the test bench is actually yourself. You are holding these signals in the lab from the signal signal generator, uh, function generator, right? So the one is called in one, one is called in two. You have in one, in two here, and you're injecting the signal to A and B. You have to connect, make the connections. Make sense? Out. Is that correct? Is is there any problem over here? Why? Why has to be why? 
Yeah, so the signal uh, right after the dot has to be the signal from the UT. Keep in mind. And I want to connect the wire to where? So source scope to the output of the test bench here. Okay, done. That's for the inst instantiation. So now you need to design a signal to test the functionality of the NAND gate. Okay, that's how to do it. Initial begin. Okay, now there's a typo here. So put a cursor there and press X, and you're going to delete it. All right. <clears throat> Delay for five units of time, which is five nanoseconds because it's been defined over here. So five means five nanoseconds. And I'm going to do A. I'm going to assign something to A. I'm going to assign a signal to A. It's a one bit binary value, one. And B, it's a one bit binary value, zero. Is there any problem of it? Any questions, any issues, any concerns? I am probing, or I am sending a signal in the lab through a lab bench, uh, benchtop lab equipment, or AKA the test bench. I'm sending a signal from there to the chip. So should I use A or use in one, in two? Do we have A here? You don't. A is from the instance, from the little device. So I need to send the signal through the lab. Okay, I'm gonna delete it, press X, and the cursor is blinking directly on the top of the equal sign. So you press I, it's gonna insert in front of it. You press A, it's gonna insert after it. So I'm gonna press I, and in one, in two, and now it's correct. Okay, since you are using Vim, what you wanna do, keep the cursor on that line, press Y for two times, for twice, boom, boom. Okay, yank, okay, copy, twice. And press P for three times. Okay, paste, copy and paste. Why do I have four signal lines? Different inputs, two bit, binary number, you have four combinations. You wanna just explore all the possible combinations to verify the logic of the NAND gate. Is that correct? Okay, let's move the cursor to the top. Let's change the values. So what do you want to assign to the input of the NAND gate at the very beginning for the first? Zero, zero, right? So put the cursor on the top of one and press R to replace, press R. Okay, see, see the change over there? And after press R, press zero. So you replace it. Okay, one zero is okay. And the last one will be one one. Save, colon W to write it. Anything else? There might be some a little bugs. I, I don't know. I I think this this is it. That's it. All right. So assume this is correct. Press window, Vivado. <clears throat> okay. 
you have to follow the procedure to start with a uh, project file uh, in, in Vivado, but I already had it. So I, I just keep rewriting and keep loading new files to the same project instead of run through all the procedure to create a new project, which is really time consuming. I don't want to do it every time. So I just directly just use this one for most of the projects, right? You can add a new design sources to it. It's very convenient. So we have the old files in the project. Just uh, remove it from the project. I'm going to show you how to do it really quick. Okay, see, these are the old files. I will control click, control click, so I can select both of them and right click to remove the files from the project. And then click this little plus sign and make sure this is add or create design sources and go to next, add files. So I have two of them, right? Because the first one is the one I just typed up five minutes before the class. Just want to show you where, uh, you know, test everything works. Okay. And now I have, the, and so this is the old one, this is the new one. Okay, this is the one I just typed in, uh, in GV. I'm going to double click it to add it into Vivado and finish. So it should show up in here in a few seconds. So it's not telling you have any uh, syntax errors. Otherwise, it's going to show you. So there are no syntax errors. You see the hierarchy here? The test bench is on the top, and the on gate is being wrapped into the project. You can see the indentation here. Okay. Why it knows this one is a device, this is a test bench. How Vivaldo knows? The critical part is over here. See? You have the device over here named Ungate, and you instantiate it over here. So that's how Vivaldo knows. If I change the name of it, but for doing that, I'm going to quit from the uh, from GVM. Okay, so there's nothing, there's no connections. It's the GVM is not designed by Vivado. Vivado is not designed for GVM. I just, it's just a text editor. Okay, so instead of making changes in two different places, I will just quit and write and quit. So if you want to just quit if, without writing, you want to type a Q there and uh, exclam exclamation sign. However, I usually will write and quit. Okay. All right. And then I have it's saying the file has been changed. It's asking me to reload the file because I just write into the vein before I close it. That's why it's, it's thinking that I have probably made some changes to vein, but actually I didn't. But it doesn't matter. Just reload it. Okay. Sometimes, just keep in mind, sometimes it's frustrating because you have two files open at the same time. You make the changes in Vivado and you save it. But however, it's not showing up. It's not automatically letting you reload the new Vivado file, the new Vim file in Vivado. So you made the changes in Vim, in Vim, but it cannot load the new file. It's not showing the new file in here. So what you can do is just close it over here and reopen it. It should show the updates, just let you know, okay? So totally works. It's, it's a really good combination, just using Vim and Vivado. No problem at all. I have never seen any issues. Okay. All right. Save. Again, you do not have to have your test bench in the same file as your device. You can have individual .v files. If you load, if you add these both of the .v files into here at the same time, it is still able to find that device you instantiate it here. You know what I mean? And the name of the file doesn't matter. The name of the module matters. Do you understand that? For example, I have, so you can, if you are looking at here, so these names are the module names. These are not the file names. The file names are here. 
in the parentheses, which doesn't matter. I can name it whatever I want. Little dog, little cat, anything. Okay. But the module name matters. So whatever the file name is, it's going to show the module name here. And as long as you inst instantiate the module name here, it is able to find out the different levels. It is able to identify which one is the test bench, which one is the design file. Okay. Keep in mind. So it's a simulation file. There's nothing to be downloaded to IPGA. And also, a test bench like this cannot be downloaded to IPGA because how can I create all these five five second delay in IPGA? It's not doing that job. It's just for simulation. Okay. So I'm going to run simulation, run behavioral simulation. Okay. And <clears throat> you can see, like, what are these signals? Look at scope bar here. It's already at the very end of the simulation. That's why you're not seeing anything. You just scroll it to the left. You are saying, what? There are 2.5 volts. What is that? So zoom out. So control click or control scroll. Oh, you don't have to press control, do you? So apparently it's unlogic over here. It's unlogic over here. And it just stopped running any simulations afterwards because I just didn't assign any values to it afterwards, right? Just have a five nanosecond. So initial begin is not a loop. It's just assigning the value for once, then it's done. So, but anyway, is that analogic? Yes. So what is this thing here? You go back to the viral code. That's a five nanosecond time delay. If you look at here, is that five nanoseconds? See this one? Five nanoseconds. And the five nanosecond delay, just to keep the file doing nothing. That's why it's called high impedance. Just nothing. It's just no signal at all. Just <laughs> red. OK? That's the simplest way to run one single simulation in Vivado using Vim as an editor. And when you are running a test bench for the IPGA, so the signals here are not going to be a simulation signal like you're typing here. It's going to be, it can be clocks, can be switches, can be LEDs. So I have to connect all these signals to the, to the device. And so you can just follow the tutorial. It's going to show you how to do it. And um, so in the future, in the class, I will usually give you a short lecture, like 10 to 20 minutes, to let you guys know what are the important things I think you should know. And afterwards, I would just give the time to you guys to follow the tutorial, and I will be around to help you guys to debug the code or the tools. Um, Any other questions? Okay, so you can start working on that and make sure that this is going to be another topic. On Thursday, you are going to do the lab, first lab, and you can see all the Vim commands on the website and how to set up the system variable uh, for Vim. So you can start Vim from the command line. And <clears throat> so these, these commands, are all important. I'm going to show you why. For example, uh, insert here, insert, so you can comment, uh, so, uh, comment out uh, multiple lines of the code. 
So for example, if I, uh, I'm going to turn it off. Okay, this is was a successful simulation. So I'm going to just directly close the simulation window first, and then I'm going to close the entire thing. And I'll do so. It's already here. Okay, you can see the command line is already here. And I'll just type gvim again, or since I already done it, I'll just press up. Right, so the up is going to bring this back, and I open it up. So for example. You are saying, and so every time you have to set a GUI again, so whenever you know you are going to keep doing this for a while, just do not do not close it. Okay. So this is just for, you know, the presentation, so you guys can see it very clearly. So for example, I need to comment out the whole module over here. Um, so you want to press Shift-V and drag it down here. Colin, Norm, I, okay, go back here, um, I'll do delete them at the same time, forgot it, let's see. X. Okay. So because you have two slashes, you need the two axes. I think. Let's see. Okay, works. So you are able to comment and uncomment multiple lines in in V. And another thing you need to know. Go back to the top of the page. Uh, the, bo the bottom of the page, shift G, the top of the page, GG, and the, the, the end of the line, the dollar sign, the beginning of the line, B, no, parentheses, the last parentheses, and open the new line, delete the new line is double D, <clears throat> and Let me see anything else. So just what refer to the tutorial. So CQ. And when you want to exit that command line, just type exit. It's gonna turn it off. Oh, one more thing. It's very critical. So CD desktop and GVM and gate. Um, if you want to open up multiple windows over here, how do you do it? This is one of the pretty powerful functions of theme. So do this, left A, you want to put the next to the new window on the left side of this window, new window, as a vertical display. And I want to call it and gate 2 dot V. So I can open up the new window. And you want to keep up, keep adding new windows. So you can do this, okay? And you can type whatever you want to type over here. And you want to switch windows. It's going to be Control W W. See, I'm switching over here. See the cursor, okay? See, I can switch in between these windows, and it's very uh, handy whenever you have multiple modules in the same chip. I have a CPU, have a memory, have all the digital log uh, blocks. You can added them in one window, which is very handy. It's better than Vivado. And you can close every single one by just doing colon WQ for each one. All right? And I exit over here. They are done. Another good thing about Vim, I think, is whenever you have a good idea, you can just directly start a command line, start a Vimo editor instead of click, 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 get into Vivado and start it up. So you can form that really uh, good habit of coding, not just a uh, Verilog in the future, but also Python, C++, right? So you can start a you can start an editor whenever you want. Um, so just keep in mind, in order to be a competent 
engineer or computer scientist or programmer sometimes you want to just keep repeating repeating whatever you already know so you can pass the interview <laughs> which is the most critical part okay you step into the door it's very easy to grow a career life otherwise you can never get started it's the same thing you have that good habit of coding in here uh, you can use the same strategy in the job as well um, all right, any other questions? Nope. You can start working on your stuff if you like. I think we have one hour and 20 minutes for the class. Is that correct? Yeah. One hour and 25 minutes. So until 1240. And I'm done. You're not done. I have to be a professor, right? Hey?